Don't start your day without your devotion. Follow us on the 6 is 12 podcast for refreshing Bible devotion. Good morning, everybody. Hope you had a wonderful night. The night was great. Mine was great. It was blessed. I believe it's the same thing. See, no matter what I went through the night, for you to see this morning, for you to be listening and hearing my voice, it means that God has a better plan for you. Don't forget every day, the reason you are saved is to serve. The reason you have seen today is for a purpose. And I pray that that purpose in our lives be actualized in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father, that you keep and sustain and deliver every of our listeners. Whatsoever is the dreams that they have dreams, we cancel every negative dreams, we cancel them. For it will surely not stand, neither would they come to pass in the name of Jesus. Today is a great day. We we'll would rejoice and we we'll be glad in it in the name of Jesus. We say thank you for everything you do for us, Lord. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. And, um, Today, we'll continue with the book of um, Matthew 6. We'll continue with Matthew 6. Um, I'm reading for the, from the New Living Translation. And uh, Matthew 6, 25. 25 says, That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food and drink, or enough clothes to wear, isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in bands for your heavenly Father feed them. Aren't you far more valuable than, than they are? 27 says something, and I want every one of us to put it into consideration. Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? 28. And why worry about your clothes? Look at the lilies of the feed and how they grow. They don't walk or make their clothing. Yet, Solomon in his glory was not dressed as beautiful as they are. 30. And if God cares so wonderfully for the wild flower that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Certainly. Surely. Certainly put that into consideration. He will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? He will certainly care for you. Now, he will certainly care for you. I believe he thought, I believe he, he, he have seen the heart of some persons doubting. Then he said, why do you have so little faith? I continue. 20, uh, 33, 31. So don't worry about these things. Saying, what will we eat? What we will drink? What we will wear? These things dominate the thought of unbelievers. Note that. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your Heavenly Father already know all your needs. 33 says, Seek the kingdom of God 
above all else. Live righteously and he will give you everything you need. You need, need, need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow brings its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Deep revelational insights we ask as we study. Amen. Whew. Glory to God. Now the scripture generally is telling us to worry not. You see, in this dispensation where we are in this if you if you if you're listening from nigeria or from africa or generally uh, the world i think it's almost the same thing but presently in nigeria it's not really easy but you see it has so much cost for people to want to think to worry what would their next where would their next food come from? What where would their next paycheck come from? The salary is not enough. How would they take up the bees, the rents, the the school fees, the light bees, and all of it? It's enough for us to get so worried and thinking about it. But the scripture here is saying, This is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. It went further to say, Whether you have enough food or drink or enough clothes to wear, Say life is more than food, is more than what to drink, life is more than clothes to wear. Then I know you may be saying, so what is now life? <laughs> life is more than all of this. It's, it's popularly said that when there's life, there's hope. In as much as you're not dead. There is always hope for you. There is always hope. Take note. There is always hope. Always. There was hope for Mephibosheth. There was hope for him. Though crippled. But one day came David was looking for someone to favor in the house of Jonathan. The house of Saul. And he went for him. There's, the, 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 there's always hope for you. No matter the condition you are going through, there is hope for you. Never you allow the worries of this world to put you down, there is hope for you. Haven't you think about it? Sometimes you feel you're going to, you're going to give it up. You're going to lose everything you've been planning for. That you cannot carry through. You cannot proceed. In fact, this is where you're going to end. But God showed up. He keeps providing. He keeps carrying you through. Check it out. You've gone past the dates you said you go to give up. And you are still going. God is able to carry you through everything in life. Now he keeps speaking, he compared you to, to, to the birds of the hair that they don't walk and God still provides for them. They don't stop food in bands, God provides for them. He said, the scripture says, can all your worries Add a single moment to your life. Can all your worries add a single moment from your to your life? But if you look at it very well, it subtracts. 
Because when you worry too much, it gives you BP, high blood pressure. When you worry too much, it gives you so many kind of sickness. And you start spending that very money you said you don't have on your heads. Why don't we believe God to carry us through every situation of our life? Every situation, not some. Many of us who believe God so much um, in finance and we don't believe God in our heads. We don't believe God in our businesses. We don't believe God in our relationship. We don't believe God in our children. We should believe God for everything, every situation of our life. We should believe God for everything, everything completely. Now, don't forget, why the scripture was talking, I was talking about Solomon and was comparing him to, to, to the wild flowers of the garden, of how beautiful they could be. And Solomon in all his glory was not as dressed as they are. But still, these wild flowers are here today and they are gone tomorrow, cast into the fire. He said, if God can care for these white flowers, why won't he care more for you? These are words of encouragement this morning to let you know that God has you so much in mind. He has you so much in mind. He said, God cares so wonderfully for white flowers that they are here today and thrown tomorrow into the fire. So why wouldn't he care more for you? Why? He said, these thoughts, these thoughts, these thoughts dominates the hearts of unbelievers. If we are, I believe and I know very well that we are all children of God. We have confessed Christ as our Lord and personal Savior. That he is the one in charge of our lives. He is the one in charge of everything that concerns us. Why don't you hand over everything to God? Let us undo everything to God. Let Him take control. Let Him be in charge. He's the one in charge. He's the commander. He's the general here. He should be in charge. Let Him run the affairs of our lives. You see, sometimes we tend to want to move with the physical eye, the physical um, um, sides, um, what is in our accounts. Sometimes as a man, you, you wake up in the morning and you check your account balance. What is there is nothing compared to the, the expenses, the bees coming in. And you want to have reasons to think and think and think and think. Put your hope and trust in God. Open in God is having the confidence that He's going to do everything. He's going to take care of this matter. Now, the secret of everything I have just been saying is in 33. Seek the kingdom of God above all else. Instead of you worrying about situations, seek the kingdom of God. For in the process of seeking his kingdom and wanting things and, and, and following, doing, it's a, it's a seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first. And this translation is saying, seek the kingdom of God above all else. Seek the kingdom of God above your bills because when you're worrying it's like you're making that thoughts an idol in your heart the lord wants you to focus on him to meditate on him to focus on him just like in the wilderness the snake was beating the children